now once we have identified and categorized the potential causes it is very very important to prioritize those causes because a good cause and effect diagram would have many sub bones and would have 30 to 40 causes listed and it is not possible to work on all the possible causes because we don't have that much time we don't don't have much resources to work on it and that's the reason uh, we, we can't do data collection which is not possible and maybe not be needed for all the causes so therefore we i would like to talk about a tool which is known as cause and effect matrix okay a uh, cause and effect matrix is a tool which is used for prioritization of the causes it's a judgment based tool it captures the knowledge and experience of team members and uses it to prioritize causes it makes the process somewhat objective okay so let's see how the cause and effect matrix templates look like okay so here we have here as i said earlier that this tool is used to categorize uh Uh, this tool is used to prioritize the causes that we identified from the brainstorming or from the fishbone diagram. Now we are going to prioritize it. So we are going to give it a label or a rank system so that we will be able to understand it. Okay. First is the low impact. We give a rating which is one if the impact is low. If the impact is medium, we give it a three. If the impact is high, we are going to give it a nine. Okay, so we the first step is to just list down all the probable causes that we have identified from the fishbone or from the brainstorming, and then we give it a rating. So the higher impact one would go as nine, the medium one it would be three, and low would be one. And then we would multiply all of them with ten to ensure that we get a meaningful number here. Okay, and then with the help of that, we would be able to pick the ones which are high in impact. The next thing which we want to do is to categorize the causes, whether it's a process door or a data door. Data door causes are the one causes which, which, wherein we would be able to get the data uh, for that particular cause. Okay, and the process door are the ones for which we won't be able to get the data. So that's how we are going to categorize it as a process door or a data door. And then. we have to prepare a data collection plan on the high impact data door causes so for example we have an example here so there is a there is a let's say doing a project on complaints uh, which is a why which we have already categorized and now these are the high impact data door causes so we have to collect the data for these causes to do the analysis and therefore we will list down all the causes here which is listed here and then we will um, capture the operational definition of it so that we should be able to capture the data in a way we want it so that we would be able to do the correct analysis now the next item that we have in list is called the control and impact matrix this is also one of the high impact uh, tool which is used to prioritize the causes okay as you can see in the diagram that we have in control out of control there we have high impact medium impact low impact okay so uh, what we have to do is what the causes that we have identified we all have to list down here uh, wherein we have to categorize it as uh, high impact low in control medium impact in control low impact in control and similarly we have to put down all the causes here the ones which we are going to prioritize are the ones which are high impact and in control so that we will be able to get the fruits uh, instantly the in control medium impact would not be taken into consideration or the low impact in control because they would not get they would not yield good results so we our focus area would be here however we will also try to examine the high impact out of control because this these are the causes which would have high impact but currently which is out of control so we would not leave it we would park it for a while and try to work on these causes simultaneously okay so either we can go for the cause and effect matrix the previous tool that we have learned for prioritization of causes or we can use control and impact matrix okay now one very important thing in the analysis phase which is called the hypothesis testing that we're going to talk about what is hypothesis testing 
to draw a conclusion about population based on sample is called hypothesis and to test certain assumption which we have made is called hypothesis test okay so hypothesis testing is a technique which is which is based on some hypothesis which is being done which probably which is a kind of an assumption that i made however with the help of hypothesis testing i would be able to make a conclusion whether my hypothesis is true or not so that is called hypothesis testing and which could be done with the help of uh, statistical softwares like Unita. Okay, so let's take an example here then we'll be able to understand what is hypothesis testing. So let's say we are doing a project on improving the attrition and we have certain hypothesis or certain causes or potential causes which is higher studies, transport, lack of growth, extended shift, salary, supervisor and person pay. No, I'm not pretty sure about it, whether these causes are significantly impacting the attrition or not. With the help of hypothesis testing, I would be able to prove whether these causes have, would have a significant impact. Okay, so let, let's get into the detail and understand the different types of hypothesis testing. The first type of hypothesis testing is called the null hypothesis, wherein it says the X does not impact so while doing the hypothesis testing, if I get a result which says a null hypothesis, which means that X does not impact Y. For example, if I if my Y is attrition and if my X is higher studies, so while doing the hypothesis, if it says a null hypothesis, which means the hypothesis that which I had, which is higher studies, that doesn't have a significant impact on the Y. That is called null hypothesis. The second type of hypothesis is known as the alternate hypothesis, which means that the X has an impact on Y. So if I take another example here, if I do the hypothesis testing of transport versus attrition, which is X and Y, and if I get a result of alternate hypothesis, then in that case, I would say attrition has a significant impact. Transport has a significant impact on the attrition. So that is a different type of hypothesis. 